I saw that my cognitive impairment was growing worse. I was starting to have trouble um, teaching my classes. I would forget what I was teaching um, during the middle of class, and these were classes that I taught for years and years and years. The two chairs came and uh, sat down next to me, and I said, I have something to tell you. And I shared with them my story about how I was having difficulty in classes and how I was not able to do simple tasks. And that was August 7th of 2015. And they said to me, you don't have to return to work. Uh, and so they gave me permission to go on disability at that time and said, you just can't do this anymore, Tom. I, I have become much more reluctant to go into areas where I really don't know where I am. And the city can get very confusing. And parking my car and then hoping I can find it at the end of whatever it is I'm, I'm, I'm there for uh, became kind of uh, anxiety producing for me. So I think it was really my daughter, the one I live with, who sees me pretty frequently, um, who felt that I should be tested. I mean, and I wasn't really connecting it with any kind of brain functioning or anything. I remember coming home and looking at Wendy's clothes and realizing that my baby was in the psych ward. And I remember looking at her cute clothes and everything was on a hanger and I dropped to my knees. I had fainted. And I just came out of it and... That was probably, and then I went out and took a walk and I thought about what's an easy way to kill myself. You have to reach out to other people. You have to, whether it's somebody else going through what you're going through, support groups. I think it's important that you get out there and be with other people. Um, because I think um, from what I've seen and what I've heard at the support group is people do tend to isolate. Um, they, they realize that they have a problem and so they um, don't want other people to see that they have this problem. And so my suggestion would be to get out there and be with people. They're just wonderful people. And um, you know, so I feel like I have, uh, I have a very good support group. And I think, I think the plan is that um, I'm, I hope to live out my life here. Here? Right. I mean, I just got myself a job, and, and that's exciting for me. Now I've gone from being a professor to being a custodian, so I won't have that anxiety, but I'll be out there, and I'll be with people, and I'll be interacting with people, and I'll be doing something that's productive. And so being productive, I think, has given me hope. Scrapbooks, yeah, the scrapbooks are really have been very, very important for us, and we managed to bring them up to date. These were like letters mm -hmm. from... Uh, my grandfather to my grandmother, oh, wow. and, then, and then letters that my grandmother wrote home to her family. And we belonged to a Jewish youth group, and I had heard Wendy's name. She probably wondered, how did I know her name? And once we looked at each other, we knew that we belonged together, right? Yeah. Is there anything you wanted to add to that? Well, it was, it was love, it love at first sight for me. Like the reason to hope. The reason to hope. Because there's, there's always hope. I mean, there's always hope, and no matter every aspect of life, I fear there's always, there's always hope. And um, um, without hope, it, for me, it'd be fi hard to find joy. I look at the beautiful white snow. It's a nice thing, and and everything else is so beautiful. There's beauty here. Even when things are going bad, the beauty of looking at the snow makes you feel better. I feel sorry for Ian to, to have to be with me because I'm not quite right. That makes me sad. And I, I think about, you know, if I could do better for the world again, you know, better than I have been so far. If we can tell a story, uh, which is our experience, that may be helpful and for other people to be able to sort out, you know, either that doesn't happen for me or that's not like, you know, kind of thing we have at all. Or, yeah, that's, that's what I'm feeling. Or I've been through that. For many people, sharing 
any kind of intimate information about yourself is just not something they've done. And especially with people they don't know, maybe they have a close friend or somebody that they talk to. But in general, I felt like um, if I talk about it, then, then that may help somebody else to realize that they can talk about what's going on for them as well.